I'm blessed to say that there are many who have helped me in my own life of faith. And going through our readings this morning, there were three of those in particular, not a complete list, but just in particular that popped out as I was reflecting on these readings. The first is Paul Walker, who was the chaplain at the day school, which I grew up Paul well, saw something in me that I had not yet seen in myself. He saw something that God was calling me to. And because of that, he was kind enough on my graduation to give me the chaplain's award. And, and part of that award was the, this Bible that I have kept with me still and is usually with me uh, in the prayer desk uh, right here at our altar at this church. Paul had an incredible joy as he went out to proclaim the gospel. And that was one of the things that he taught me is that even in service to our Lord, we can have a little bit of joy in that world. Another person who came to mind is somebody that you heard me talk about quite a bit, my mentor, Heidi Kenner. Now, Heidi walked with me throughout my discernment process, and she provided opportunities for me to serve God under her loving arm and guidance. And Heidi taught me that it's not only okay to be firm in our faith and our belief, but we can do so while also <clears throat> showing love and kindness to those around us. And that's whether we do that work through outreach or whether we're just sitting there and listening to somebody talk about their day. The final example I have is Bill Wartman. Now, Bill was a classics teacher in my high school, and we all knew of his faith. We all knew that he was greatly devout. But he never let his faith, he never let the fact that he was so devout keep him from showing love to all, no matter what they believed. He really did help and serve and teach everyone. And because of who he was, he was able to open the doors for dialogue with people that might not otherwise have been willing to talk about faith, who might not otherwise have even been willing to have a conversation with somebody about religion. And Bill was able to use his faith to show this, this knowledge and, and this love of Jesus. I remember him one time in talking about the classics, and being in Greece even, and going through an example of what we hear in the New Testament, of going through one of Paul's speeches in Acts as we were in that very spot where Paul would have given this address. So Bill used his knowledge to help spread the good news, but he also did so in a way that showed that we can give that love, that we can demonstrate that love to all even if those others don't necessarily have faith to themselves. The people who show Christ to us in our lives are important. They help us shape our own relationship with God. They are the voices crying out, 
to help us connect with God more fully. <clears throat> and that is the goal of John the Baptist, to help us all connect more meaningfully with God, to help us turn back from our own ways and turn once again to follow God's ways instead. And John the Baptist is not the only voice that we hear. And he's not the only voice that we hear in our readings today. From Paul speaking to the Philippians all the way back to the prophet Malachi, we hear other voices calling for us to come back to God. And the message we hear in our readings today is very much centered around repentance. The literal meaning of that word being to turn back, to turn back to our Lord. But we also see great examples from people showing what God first showed them. Love and mercy. In our canticle today, the song of Zechariah, Zechariah, of course, as we heard in the gospel, being John the Baptist's father, we hear in that canticle a reminder that God isn't just looking out for us now, but that God has been looking after us all along, that God has even been looking after our ancestors, those who came before us. Paul reminds us, or rather reminds the Philippians specifically, of the love he has for them. And that love is the same love and grace that God showed Paul that God shows to all of us. And our gospel reminds us that that call to repentance is mixed in with that gift of forgiveness. Even with the call to repentance, God is there to show mercy upon us. We see this message of love, and mercy, and returning to our Lord through all the messengers that God sends to us to deliver that word. And that's what I've learned through my own life and my own experience. And this is what God's messengers have to offer us, showing us the same love that God first showed them. That message, and those messengers in my life, have helped me strengthen my own relationship with God. And my hope is that we all can be like them. That not only will we all have examples of life and faith in our own lives, but that we will also act as those bearers of Christ to all of those that we meet in our own lives and in our own faith. Really, in this time of preparation, in this time of Advent, my hope is that all of you can be beacons of Christ to the world. <clears throat> If you can show the same love that God has shown you, then our world will be all the better for that. If we can show that same love God first showed us, then we can all come closer in relationship with God. Then we can all work together to build the church and to help all see the love and glory and mercy and forgiveness that God has offered 
to us. My hope is that we can show that same message, that same love and mercy, especially as we prepare now for the coming of the Christmas season.